Hello, friends. Welcome to Binge O'Clock, the podcast where we watch something and then we talk about it. I'm Joy Selden, and I've seen almost everything. I'm Dinyang Ha, and I've seen almost nothing. I'm Nella, and if we record this in 50 minutes or less, I might have enough time to go to the good pizza place to get the good pizza, because I had really bad pizza for lunch today, and I have to, like, correct this cosmic mistake. Oh, no. <laughs> bad pizza in New York. Yeah, no, it was awful. Like, <laughs> I want to find the person who left a Google review about how it was the best pizza, and I want to find them, and I want. I feel like I have to help this person. Oh. Like, <laughs> I feel like I need to pull them out of darkness. <laughs> 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 Who hurt you? What pizza demon hurt you? Precisely. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. Anyway. Yes, we will We will fix this after the recording. I promise. So for this episode of Binge O'Clock, we watched Fringe. We're still in season two, mm-hmm. episodes seven through nine, where... Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 where, where we encountered one of my favorite tropes when done well, which is the magic child. Uh, we learned some more about some observers. We had a uh, rom-com? Question mark. Rom, rom-drom? I, uh, parental. <laughs> it's, it's parental love. I, uh, don't make this a rom-com. I was going to say, it's, this. it's light on both the rom and the com. It's, <laughs> it's, what's, the, what's the opposite of the Eros love? It's the... <laughs> it's the... For those, for those Yuri on Ice fans out there. And... <laughs> And larger than the average hookworm. Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. Where do we start? Do we just go in uh, order? Can I? All right. I just want to say up front, when you can mind control people, mm-hmm. why, why murder? That, I, I'm baffled, child. <laughs> you could have just, everyone could have just had a nice nap. I mean, he needed two people to drive him. And he needed, I guess, a ton of money. So he staged his own kidnapping. Could he have mind-controlled his dad and just told his dad, Hey, Dad, give me money. Uh, that probably well, would have been easier. One would have... I, look, I think <laughs> at the end of the day, this kid wasn't exactly one of, you know, this series' great thinkers. <laughs> you know, it's like when you make a copy of a copy. It's not as good as the original. I mean, like, let us remember, Ay. he is a clone. He is a clone. And he is the only one that worked. Can I just say, <laughs> Nina? Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Nina. Wait, no, you want it. Well, wait a minute, Nella. You did want like Nina, the Nina, Nina moment Nina, of like Nina. who let out the murder butterflies? And, Nina. and here we got we got a murder I know, club. I know, I know. Look, murder butterflies are one thing. Clones in the basement mm-hmm. are another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I don't murder think that butterflies they're... aren't sentient the jar. beings. <laughs> I don't uh, think that they're is. all murderous. <laughs> This particular the one, The butterflies though. or the clones? The clones. <laughs> I can't believe we just had to clarify that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, though. All these poor Tylers. Well, do you have it written down, Danielle, where she's like, yeah. none of the Tylers? Well, we know that we know that these experiments are called the Penrose Carson experiments. We know that this was Tyler three of five. And then they actually bring the body into the room where you see literally 20 of them. So I guess it wasn't just of five, Nina. <laughs> I guess they woke up. Maybe and they then, wake them up five at a time because they're a lot to handle. Maybe it's like it, they're all the same batch. Oh, yeah. You know? Okay. So maybe like in each batch. Yes. It's do like, like do they all small have home brew. It's like, you know, you, you, you do five clones at a time for that. <laughs> That good artisanal swear jar. And we Uh. know the whole purpose of the experiment was to see whether mind control is possible given the right conditions, which I guess are puberty, ADD medication, and some special kind of... I'm so mad that ADD medication is like the trigger here. I'm furious. I know. (laughs) I know. Yeah, not great. (laughs) That vexed me (laughs) a lot. And an untested brainwave enhancer, that's what it was, equals the perfect mind control cocktail. Ugh. <laughs> it's so It's so gross, but also, like, <laughs> that level of, like, you'll never be able to control a teenager in puberty. So it's like, it might as well be just a lost cause. I also want to know if the rest of the five also had ADD? Like, are you genetically engineering the clones to have different things? Are you going to try bipolar next? Like, Can they do that? I don't even know. Yeah. I don't don't even know what the clones are meant to represent. (laughs) 
to see if mind control is possible under the right conditions. Actually, you know what, then? That does make me think that they are able to tweak little things about each clone. Because if it's the exact same person with, you know, in different home styles, in different environments, in different whatever, and then they find the perfect little brew that allows them to create a mind controlling clone, that's the whole point of the experiment. Yeah, I mean they have to they have to be tweaking them slightly. A little bit. Because why else would you need a room of twenty Tylers? I right. also just like who what teenagers and the mom like, I just have. we can only take five teenagers at a time yeah. like <laughs> it's I mean, too much angst clearly <laughs> <laughs> I know this is not entirely related but I kind of can't handle how Nina signs off warmest regards Nina yes yes <laughs> like like this Love is it. suddenly shit's creek <laughs> right <laughs> It, 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 yep. So anyway, sure is. we have our mind controlling clone who I guess turns to murder. Yeah, who I guess turns to murder. As I... Peter puts it, congratulations, you kidnapped yourself. Congratulations, you're a criminal mastermind. <laughs> like, I think, Nella, you said this when we were watching it, that it was something like, oh, of all the people to kidnap, Peter was the right choice. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Peter is just going to give <laughs> give your nonsense right back to well, you. Well, now, you know? as we, since we, just the through line for all three episodes, I definitely wrote down in each one, Peter's in trouble. Must be Tuesday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because He's we definitely have officially entered that portion of the series. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> becoming our damsel. Uh, and he's in distress. Which Have I love day. so much. <laughs> I just, I love that it's Peter. Me too. I love that it's almost always Peter. It's, and I really, like it's his, really precious. I like that his go-to is literally always, oh, you were raised in a single-person household? I was also raised in the single-person household. It's like, Peter, it's not always going to work. <laughs> you won't always have an adorable, relatable anecdote to literally everyone you talk to. <laughs> if anyone's going to be the kind of guy who's going to be like, you know, when you start with murder, you can't really go from there. You know, you you, you hit the wall at 100. You should have started small. Influence people. You know, make them take naps. Make like, them take naps. <laughs> make them open their wallets and give you some money. Like... But no, you went straight to murder, kid. Straight to murder. Can we discuss? And if- I can control all of you or some of you. Ew. He's just, <laughs> a, creepy just say. he's just a creepy kid. Oh, no, he's 100% a creepy kid. So we come up with the idea of the white noise headphones blocking his signal, which <laughs> is exactly why, in my mind, this is why we need to teach American Sign Language in uh, in schools because this is ridiculous like why can't i <laughs> sign hi i'd like another round of my bartender in a super loud bar like wouldn't this mm-hmm. be so handy for like day-to-day life sure if would. we don't have to communicate through speaking we should just be teaching american sign language to like pre-k like this is this is stupid <laughs> yeah no nella nella and i had had i mean i've also had the idea that I like really need to hop back on the the sign language train because I knew enough to carry like a very <laughs> rudimentary conversation when mm-hmm. I was I want to say in in my teenage years and I have since lost almost all of it. I know it's one of those things where if you aren't lo- using a language consistently, it just kind of floats away. Unfortunately. Certainly does. And it, we, like, this occurred to me again uh, several years later. I want to say it was five or six years ago. A friend of ours came to visit us and she had some really bad laryngitis Mm -hmm. and she couldn't speak. And I was just like, wish we knew American Sign Language. She was like, right? It would have made this so easy because you wouldn't have needed to speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) FBI raids, definitely another place where American Sign Language could have come into play. Yes, (laughs) right? Take note. Um, right. <laughs> another thing that sort of bugged me about this episode was that it had the classic kid finds out about birth parent, kid decides life would be better with other birth parent, yeah. kid decides to go find birth parent. Of course, with the twist of kid commits acts of murder along the way to finding said birth parent. And I'm just like, that's not OK. Now, again, I understand you're a teenager and you're not thinking, 
how do you think this conversation is going to go when you show up and it's like you got a you got a body count kid? Right. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think that we can chalk this all up to not thinking because even yeah. that that guy at the gas station, how he makes one of them pick up boiling hot coffee and smash it on his head. Yeah. And he makes another one stick keys in, a, in an electrical socket. Like yeah. this is malicious behavior. Yeah. This is way beyond I am just not thinking. Like, I feel like somebody was like contemplating Columbine and being like, well, obviously, you know. Teenage boys are monsters. Mm. Uh, it, it's mm-hmm. just a weird vibe in this episode. Like once you know what's happening, the murders get really uh, uncomfortable, superfluous, and uh, yeah, and uncomfortable, and just like extra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and like once because they do, they try to do the old switcheroo thing where like and they make you think it's one of the guys that's mm-hmm. doing it before you realize that it is Tyler. And it's just, like, it makes sense if you have two, you know, the goons or whatever, which they're not even goons. Like, once they find out they're car salesmen, I'm like, D- isn't anyone wondering why? This is it. <laughs> well, Olivia's wondering why. Olivia yeah. was asking the right questions for this entire episode. For the entire episode. She really this was. True. She goes, what? What? All they want is money? And then yeah. every single time we come up with more information, she's like, none of this actually makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> none of this makes sense. Mm-hmm. I, I think this show's default is murder. I think we can just slap that on the <laughs> on the flavor text of Fringe. I feel like... It, it, well, it, I mean, it, you said it, Nella, like, you started with murder. You started at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. You can't pull that back. They no. killed a plane of people in the cold open. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's just, it's a steamroller, and they can't, they can't, you know, they can't lasso it and put it back in the barn. You can't, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like you could have really played with, like, the growing, unsettling horror of the things a teenager could make you do that have nothing to do with murder. And like, where you're just like, well, that's not like necessarily like a bad thing, but the fact that he's making me do it is unsettling and wrong and gross. Like there's, Mm. there were like levels we could have done where he could have just been like a kid who is just like, yeah, like dance like a chicken or something, you know? And like, that still would have been uncomfortable and weird and gross, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but no, we went murder. Didn't we? I feel like we got ADD that makes it. you a murderer when you're a clone. I don't know. And puberty. Don't forget <laughs> puberty. Puberty, AD, ADD men's, and being a clone. I dare. I was once a child, and I never killed anyone. I was too <laughs> distracted. I survived my entire puberty without taking one life. Thank you. <laughs> It's just so, it's so weird. It's so weird. It, yeah. You're right. It's like, why do we, why do we go straight to murder? Yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. And there were even moments, there were moments in the episode where they just, where they had Tyler change his minds kind of oddly. Yeah. Like how he, I guess, just knocks out this one police officer because Peter begs him and then he doesn't have Peter stab himself in the leg with a steak knife. And I'm like, ah, oh, none of this actually tracks. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> like if if you're going for soulless psychopath, then you have to go for it. Yeah. Then just you have to go for it. Mm-hmm. You can't talk reason into him. But Mm-mm. then it's just like uh, that it yeah, it choices were made. Uh. <laughs> choices were made. I will say I really enjoyed this episode for some of the Peter Walter moments. Yes. Oh, yeah. There were some great Peter Walter moments. You were abducted. Of course you need crepes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Used to call them creeps. Would call her, would drive her batty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just like the best shade ever. <laughs> to like one parent to the other. You call them creeps whenever she made them. <laughs> a teddy bear versus mind control spies. Bad guys don't stand a chance. Which, frankly, they didn't because it turns out that headphones that block noise don't, in fact, do anything to solve this problem. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. I, Walter got it wrong this time. Like, he tried. I also really love the moment between him and him and Astrid. Yeah, with the... Tinfoil hats? With the tinfoil hats. Yes! And, and Olivia just looks at her and she's just like, what? I like that it's the reveal where when 
you first show up or when Olivia first shows up on the scene, you can only see Walter. And so you can see Walter wearing a tinfoil hat. And you're like, yeah, of course Walter would wear a tinfoil hat. And then it pans slightly left and it turns out Astrid is in one too. <laughs> It's like, it's yeah, like, they freak me out, too. Massive <laughs> dynamic scares me. <laughs> <laughs> no, there were some great Peter Walter moments in that, this episode. I mean, we also got to see a lot of massive dynamic, which was fun. Uh, mm-hmm. 71 you know. laboratories. Oh, Walter like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I I also really appreciate that we got to... You know, you had Walter angry for a reason this time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, not just because he wasn't getting his way, but literally, like, uh, you know, you did this to your son, and now your son has captured mine. Yes. You know, Peter's I, in danger. Here's the thing, though. Uh, this is some real glass houses, Walter. Yes. Like, oh, the, for sure. <laughs> you're really, You're really going to give Dr. Carson gruff for experimenting on his son? Well... It's like, we're all friends here. You know, you experiment on your son. I've experimented on my son. We do it all the time. He wasn't even giving him gruff for experimenting on his kid because he didn't know that the doctor was doing that at that point. He Mm -hmm. was giving him gruff for not paying enough attention to his child and not noticing that his child had swiped some of the brain enhancer medication. Ridiculous. Which, by the way, Walter Bishop <laughs> notoriously <laughs> neglected his son. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, says Dr. Walter Bishop. <laughs> oh, it was boy. it was a little pot kettle. <laughs> not going to lie, it was a little pot kettle. But I just, I love that he just, he actually gets angry for an actual reason. <laughs> not not just mm-hmm. because he's mad. Well, I don't want to fast forward too much because I do, I agree with you and I love seeing how much Walter cares about Peter, but we've really seen that for this entire series, which is kind of what mm-hmm. I appreciate about the end of episode nine, where we actually see Walter care about someone who is not himself or Peter. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not to fast forward too far. Should we discuss episode eight first? Probably. (laughs) So I just, I, so, you know, I know last episode I made a big deal about how, um, I would put money on that. There were no more aliens, but it, it, it's the observers are aliens, aren't they? I don't know. I mean, because, like, there's a lot going on with the observers, and a part of me is like, (laughs) oh, no. Danielle just said, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Danielle is one of two people on this call who has finished the series. Danielle (laughs) may or may not know what they are, but she was just, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Um, Is that a, I don't want to spoil it, I don't know, or is that a... I'm 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 staring at you very suspiciously. I don't know. Now I'm starting to get nervous there about this bet I made. We can't share. <laughs> I'm not, I'm nervous about this bet I made, and only an episode after I I very definitively de- made my declaration that there would be no more aliens in this series. Was and it, now I'm was like, it the oh language? no. Was but it the language like, they're writing in? Does that make you sus? No, it was more the time traveling, bullet catching. Well, they're um, not time traveling. They're they're observing because they see all of time at once. Oh yes, Brendan's Brendan's, Brendan's little thing. straw. I mm. loved Brendan's little straw demonstration. They see all of time at once. Anyway, I don't know. It's, I'm starting <laughs> to get a little nervous about how much money I'm going to have to donate. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so we 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 meet an observer, August. Um, yes, yes. Who kidnaps a girl? He he uh he breaks. Uh, the rules, and he interacts yes, with yes. events. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Forgets his journal, yes. though, behind, which, uh, <sighs> so. Yeah. Although, can I just say. Not exactly the A-team here. <laughs> can I just say, the show needs to let Liv just be an aunt. Let Liv enjoy her time with her niece. <laughs> I know. We really need to talk about the work-life balance of the Fringe Division and how they don't have any. <laughs> And I know she. I know. You see her There's on like, the roller coaster at the end. She's so happy. I know. And they have to ruin it. I know. As, I if, know. as if Olivia weren't already having a hard time. You know. Oh, she's so happy. It's too bad things are about to get hard for her. I know, right? Uh, I know. This whole episode sh- should just be called "So You Caught the Feelings." Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> it is. He caught feelings. So that was your bug. first problem. Um, um, you caught feelings. That's your first problem right there. Uh, just an ocean. Just that gif of the ocean of feels. <laughs> I mean, just yes. Oh, I love no face. I, with no face. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Nella, I'm with you on this. I really do hope that the love that was being described here was parental. You know, I was reading it as parental was, love. It probably was. Yeah. I, to me, it was like that you you watch someone grow up and like mm-hmm. you you want their lives to have meaning and you care for them. And for me, the love that August was talking about was like a like a parental love, like yeah. not a not a twilight. I want to bone, go to bone town. <laughs> like, right. I, it just someone <laughs> who's significantly younger than me. Yeah. Ish. I mean, they exist outside of time. So what even is age? Right. Well, yeah, that. And I mean, like, look, like. And I know, like, there there are people on Twitter who uh, are like, age a hundred year age difference is is bad, and it's and you should feel bad for reading it because that's abusive. And I'm like, first off, vampires don't exist. Second off, uh, observers don't exist. Third off, um, you can, you literally can't have self cess with yourself in real life. It does not exist. You cannot f- swear jar yourself. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I know you feel that this is a bad thing, and no one should do it. Well, I've got good news for you because no there is literally no way for this thing that has upset you to happen in real life. Therefore, it cannot be abusive Has <laughs> because not it happens, does not will exist. Not <laughs> and I can't believe, like, I, Loki is like the, the, the Loki discourse is driving me crazy. Anyway, um, so <laughs> we'll have to no, discuss driving- that. We'll have to discuss that off the pod because I don't spend a lot of time online, listeners. So I don't actually know what the discourse is. I've just seen the show in my own happy little bubble and very much enjoyed it for what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm about to ruin your day, Danielle. I can't <laughs> the, buckle up, Buttercup. Because uh, <laughs> okay, tell you're me about, about it age afterwards. fifty years, and and now your relationship with your husband is going to get deeply problematic, <laughs> according to the internet. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> You know that. Okay, okay. But going back to the parental thing, the fact that he he gave her back her teddy bear at the end, and that he made her important. I feel yeah. like you could. Re- and he he finally he finally Im- had an impact on real world events instead of yeah. just watching them. Like I feel mm-hmm. like that very much could be read as leaving a legacy. Yeah. 100%. So yeah, no, I think that totally tracks. And the fact that what makes her important is that like an observer, like she killed an observer. Mm-hmm. I know true, he dies because of his actions in protecting her, but her existence led yes. to the death of an observer and that's yes. what makes her important. That's mm-hmm. what sets her apart from everything else. And to me that reads so like a parent sacrificing themselves for a child. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I will give my everything for this kid. I will even give my life so that they can live on. Like, and have that, a future, that, to me, yeah. that reads so parent. Like, mm-hmm. it reads parent. It doesn't read Titanic to me. <laughs> <laughs> I never, to, to be very clear, I don't know that I ever read it as romantic exactly. It was, I mean, when the show came out which would have been 2009, thereabouts. I feel like my brain didn't always recognize whenever they were doing a love story, it didn't always have to be romantic love. Mm. So, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. my brain had it be automatically romantic love, but it's like I never wanted them to get get together. So I'm almost like... I don't think it actually mattered. No. And I don't, I don't I think that say- he, he didn't want them to get together either. Like, he never, never, yeah. never would have spoken to her, interacted with her, mm-hmm. anything, until he needed to save her and make sure she had a future. Right. Yeah, and also, like, and, and even down to, like, the conversation he has with Walter, right? Mm-hmm. And the advice that Walter gives him. I mean, yeah. it's... And also, I don't know, my heart breaks for August because, like, to suddenly be overwhelmed with something that you have no words for you have no experience with you have no concept of and it's not so that you woke up one day and it and and like this overwhelming love hits you it's that mm-hmm. it has built over time and you you've had no way to conceptualize it you've had no way to contextualize it it, it to and me, no one that's to just, talk to about it because yeah. He can't talk to the other observers about this thing that he's experiencing. Yeah, they they won't understand it. They don't mm-hmm. understand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, all they keep saying is like, 
I, she is not important. Like, clearly, she you're, is not important. clearly you're wrong. You've made an error. You know what? That's actually good that you bring up that conversation between him and Walter as well, because there's yet another parallel of a father and his son or a father yeah. and his child. Of mm-hmm. And like and two parents talking about like the very real fear that parents have. Mm-hmm. about, you know, how do I protect them when, like, oh, have you seen the world? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, pour one out for August with his little American pin. Yeah, um, It's just... <laughs> I know! The American pin gets me every time. I know, it really but does. The veteran is just like... You know, just trying to just trying to help out a dude who definitely looks lost and confused. Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> I know. Although, can we just talk about how the this is kind of weird for me, though. Like the observers have a cleaner. They yes, have a Donald. guy. They have Donald, <laughs> Donald the assassin to, to, to kill for them. <laughs> I'm guessing for like and it's just like and then suddenly we became the TVA. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Where we have to like erase our mistakes, mm. like does and a part of me is just like, um, does this happen very often? Observers, like, I mean, but then so you've got a Donald, like in, in throughout time, like you got to have other Donalds. Like, do you have one in the Roman? Like, did somebody not kill Caesar and you had to have Donald take care of it? Like, not the, the same Donald, but I mean, like, so wh- <laughs> all I can imagine is like all. The people like Donald mm-hmm. that they have had to hire throughout time and space. Oh, yeah. Like the weirdest Doctor Who episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait, I, I have a question for you. Yes. According to Broyles, yes. Donald has been tied to six assassinations in 10 years. Would you consider that fairly frequently that they're fixing their errors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> No, I mean, is it all observer related or is like, or does like, you know, like the CIA's got a, you know, or, or like he's, he's like just a hitman for hire. And those like six assassinations are not all associated with the observers. I actually didn't catch that bit. I like don't if think they were all Broyles like knows. fringe division related murders. I don't, don't think Broyles like, knows. It okay. was literally like I, his weapon has been tied to these six killings. I think Donald needs to to uh, get new weapons instead of just killing with the same weapon every time. Uh, one, <laughs> buy a second gun, Donald. Donald. Get it Jeez. together, man! <laughs> don't be so so freaking uh, se- like Donald. Don't ways. be so. so uh, uh, what's the word? Um, a stick in the mud. I don't no, know. No, no. Don't be so freaking <laughs> sentimental about your uh. weapons, Donald. <laughs> That's how they get you. That's how they build the file on you. <laughs> you kill I, one person, get rid of the evidence, get rid of the weapon, get a new one. I will say, I don't think the other murders that Donald is tied to have anything to do with the observers. Just I think that's more the CV that he came with that made the observers go, well, this guy will be able to handle it. Donald. Exactly. I mean, like... <laughs> Donald, like, they can, if they can see the breadth of time, they can see that Donald, like, doesn't care at all. Mm, Like, mm -hmm. he gets paid, he takes out the person, he, the job is done, he moves on, he doesn't change weapons, we don't know why. But, like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, he, like, they, they chose him probably just because it's like, he does, he does the thing, he gets the job, he has Mm -hmm. no opinions at all. He's not going to try and save a young woman who has been kidnapped who may or may not be somewhere yeah, yeah. because of the conversation they have where the, where august says but we have interfered before and they said but only it was like that that one time was only to correct a mistake exactly and i don't want to i don't want to spoil anything or say too much but there were definitely some pointed looks in that scene yes i know <laughs> <laughs> yes that was just to correct a previous error pointed look <laughs> My favorite is August is the one who starts yes. the pointed look because it's very much that like child insisting to their parent of like, but you've done this before. And it's like, I learned it from different. watching you. <laughs> I learned it from watching you, Dad. <laughs> anyway, again, I mean, out also for August, but God, God bless Michael Severus. Like yes. he is my, yes. he is one of my favorite. Uh, aspects of this show. I love him to pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, also a musical theater actor. Amazing singing voice. 
uh, he played Sweeney Todd, which was hilarious because I was listening to Sweeney, my recording of Sweeney Todd, and I was like, that voice sounds familiar, and instead of connecting it to Fringe, I connected it to the Who's Tommy because he was on my recording of Tommy. Ah. And then I was like, wow, I've been listening to this guy for, like, more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then I looked up what he looked like, and I was like, oh, it's September from Fringe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm kind of sad that he doesn't feature at all in the musical episode. He doesn't, right? <laughs> no, he doesn't. He does and not. I've been mad about oh. it for a very long time. Oh. What a lost opportunity. I love Anna Torv, and she tries, but oh boy. I know. We'll save that that's for when we gave, get there. We'll save that for when we get spoilers, there. Spoilers, spoilers, but that's why they gave her the Whispery song. Bless. But yeah, I did like this episode because it starts to build that mystery of the observers. We get to see more than September. We get to see all of them weird, all of them weird People, <laughs> I, I, I love them. We get to go to their favorite Indian restaurant, uh, so that's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the capsaicin, yes. I love the capsaicin oh, moment. God. Of what, like a good, the... what a good, what uh, a good, just a good twist there. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Brendan, the... your favorite lab tech is back. Yeah, Brendan, <laughs> love him. Liked his explanation of the mysteries of time. He's definitely watched too much Doctor Who, and I appreciate that. <laughs> It's just making Olivia's shoes wet every yes. time we show them these bags. Can I just say, Walter, um, and his quest to recreate his favorite strawberry milkshake because the place <laughs> closed, mm -hmm. having once recreated Ecto High C Cooler, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Side note, makes a great cocktail. <laughs> mm. throw, some, throw some alcohol in it and it's mm -mm, good stuff. Uh <laughs> okay, now, speaking of that milkshake, the moment where Walter wa walks up to Astrid, offers her a spoonful of something, and no. she just accepts it? No, she's been working in that lab too long. Astrid, get <laughs> Absolutely out. Absolutely not. She would never. Astrid, get out. <laughs> she is very, very smart, and I don't think the show wrote her in that moment correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, look, the show does not know it, like, like, I feel like the show is constantly, like, they're, like, the nuns from from uh, Sound of Music, what's like, yes. what would you do with a problem like Astrid? <laughs> they don't know what to do with Astrid. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that's true. Yeah, no, the showrunners have zero idea of yeah. what to do with Astrid. And it, it gets, uh, it, you know, it, I wish I could tell you it improves. Yeah, well, um, I don't believe you. One, one cent. No, I don't it, believe you. It, it doesn't. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. So... So we, we end on episode nine, which uh, just insert the Captain America gif of, so you smuggled in Cthulhu. <laughs> no, it's, it's so, God, what, so I find the uh, episode title really interesting because snakeheads are actually massively invasive fish mm. that um, are delicious. They're actually like, there's a, there's a big movement to, uh, hey, you want to save the Chesapeake Bay? Eat fish head. Um, or snakehead, snakehead. Yes, eight snakehead, um, and uh, so you know we're playing with the uh, invasive species thing. I really wish we didn't do the. So we're smuggling them in through humans. Yes, um, boatloads of Chinese, Chinese refugees. Did it refugees. have to be literal boatloads of Chinese refugees? Mm, we sure did it. Well, um, looking for a better life. Yeah, we sure did that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, and uh. We're, even where it's we're smuggling illicit drugs materials in for ancient Chinese medicine. Well, it's not ancient Chinese medicine. I know it's not ancient Chinese sure medicine, like, but that's they what sure it feels wanna, like. <laughs> they sure want to pretend it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, 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 it has the Hollywood trappings of ancient Chinese medicine. You yes. know... <laughs> Ooh, oh, so yeah. irritating. You know, you know, which when I liked better when they did this, this kind of like, hey, let's uh, l let's uh, collect like materials from these weird monstrous creatures uh, to sell to people. Mm -hmm. Pacific Rim. I liked it better when they did it there. Yeah, no, they do it super well in Pacific Rim. I yeah. think it's, I think it's really interesting there. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like it here. I'm, I will. So the things I like about this episode mm -hmm. are 
there is a lot to well, like in this episode, I think. There's, there's so a lot many to like about this episode. Good character moments. <laughs> I really like Tai Ma as the bad as the bad guy, personally. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, Taimon does a really good job because uh, he's got that he's given, got that good uncle face. He's like Leonard Nimoy, where it's just like, but I love you and I trust you, <laughs> and you're killing people. <laughs> so when I, he gently wraps you in a blanket after yeah, you've survived some horrid yeah. tragedy, yes, you accept the blanket and the tea. I know. I expect <laughs> him to take care of me and not cut me open like a fish. <laughs> so he makes a really like effective turn. villain. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the slow turn with putting on the glove, and right? Like, mm-hmm. Your your dreams are dashed immediately. But, <laughs> like, but you're my but you're my kindly faced uncle. Why are you doing this? <laughs> we were gonna have tea. We were gonna, we were gonna you were tea. gonna make me cookies, <laughs> not <Aww>. murder, <laughs> not murder. <laughs> There More we go. Cookies, that's, that's the less episode murder. title. You were gonna make me tea, not murder. <laughs> tea, not murder. Uh, also, I really love the uh, small the Chinese auntie grandma. At the end. <laughs> yes, oh, yes, the auntie. auntie at the end. Faye was the truly the MVP of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Faye is because, my uh, favorite part of the whole episode. How could you look just... at Peter? Uh, Peter, how could you look at Walter's face just breaking down at that? bus stop bench and yeah. not invite him into your home and put him in your most comfortable robe and yeah. feed him your most delicious noodles Precisely. and then dial every single possible combination of those seven numbers until you hit peter yeah <laughs> hey, the best auntie she is Truly. The absolute best. I love that she's all like she tells Peter and give I don't know if it was the if it was a guilt dig. My instinct is no. But like I love the moment of just like I usually don't invite strangers into my home, but he seemed really upset. And I'm just like, is that your auntie being like mm mm? I don't think it was guilt. I think it was more not. A, I wouldn't call it a guilt dig. I think it's that moment where it's like, I want you to know what I did for you. Yes. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> you don't have to feel bad about it, but I do want you to know that this is what happened. <laughs> but I want you to understand exactly what I did and exactly why I did it. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds about right. <laughs> but anyway, so so the whole point of this is that, you know, I mean, so once again, we have in in Fringe, like a, a, a giant version of something that's bad. Uh, Fringe really loves their giant, hideous versions of things. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> really, and, like, so this is, like, a giant, hideous version of, like, a tapeworm. They keep think, calling uh, it a hookworm. hookworm. A hookworm, hookworm. right. I, didn't, okay. I did not even bother Googling what an actual hookworm looks like, but I cannot imagine it looks like that. And this is, like, this is, like, our, this is, like, our friend's uh, whole point about parasites curing asthma all over again. Like, okay. Well, but, sure, but, you know, in that treatment, the parasites are supposed to survive inside of your body and become yeah. part of you. They're not supposed to be crushed and put in and then surgically inserted into your spleen on a monthly basis, which, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Choices. The choices is, that being It's not even a cure. It's not even a cure. It's a treatment. Yeah. Yes. None of this, let us make clear, is how Chinese medicine works, including yeah. that last bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. By uh, the way, hookworms definitely don't look that terrifying. No. Just gonna <laughs> just gonna put that up. Just gonna put that one out there. Well, I'm looking at some pictures. Well, they're also they're, not. They four look like freaking they feet actually long. look like they actually look like really cute little tubes that are just like, huh? Oh, like, they're hookworm. just. I'm a hookworm. So they don't have have like round face. Men, they don't have many tentacles. No, they don't have like those and snapping jaws. (laughs) Yeah, no. Oh my gosh, the moment where one bites Walter, Astrid goes to rip it off, and he's like, "No, no, no, wait. This is actually (laughs) quite a pleasant sensation." (laughs) No, I was so happy that Walter found the high. (gasps) Walter found the high. Look, everybody, Walter found the high. Is anyone (laughs) surprised? Listen, he's had a really rough couple of episodes. I think that he deserved a little bit of a high. He's trying to find his self actualize as Peter keeps pulling, putting it and become a more independent person. And it's just heartbreaking how hard it is for him to do that. Yeah. I know. It is. <laughs> oh, Astrid having to follow him, trying to like 
sneak and follow him around Chinatown <laughs> and getting caught. That Not was, her I mean, forte. What a what a what a cute scene that was. And then Astrid, you touch a hair on Astrid's head. So help me, show. So mm-hmm. help me. Uh, so like Walter wanders off and Astrid can't find him. So Astrid goes back to the lab. And at this point, of course, uh, the bad guy of the week uh, has put three and four together and has somehow figured out where Walter's lab is. They followed and Astrid. Sends, <sighs> followed had Astrid. To have followed Astrid. And then we didn't we to be fair, we didn't see it happen in the show. But like, that's what had to have happened mm-hmm. yeah. because Astrid goes back to the lab and then he's just like there as soon as she gets back. But like maybe like maybe I'm just misremembering it, but I feel like she walks in the lab and there's someone already there. Yeah, that's fair. So it felt like weird to say that they followed Astrid. I feel like there was she walks in and like there's people rifling through and then a guy walks up behind her. Mm. Oh, actually, you may be right. Maybe. Yeah. It was a weird, Some I feel like there's a weird cut happening here, or like that there was something, actually, I was looking up the episode, and supposedly Astrid was supposed to fight those guys, and like, oh. she lands a, a hit on one of them, like, and so that's why, like, when they're trying to force feed Peter the parasite thing, one uh-huh. of them has a black eye, but oh. like, they ended up cutting the fight. So I think this whole, like, I think I think a lot got mixed around, like, oh, in editing, or they made choices, like, after they filmed, and so that's why that was Astrid followed, or how did mm-hmm. they find out where the lab was, doesn't really make sense. I feel like how do things you feel- got dropped on the cutting room floor kind of thing. No, that's fair. How do you feel about them cutting a potential fight scene? I'm not sure, I'm not sure Astrid has to be a badass ass kicker. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm and honestly, like I was not keen on the idea of like three Chinese guys beating up on a black lady. Not keen on that either. Yeah. So but again, Mm -hmm. don't 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 you hurt my Astrid. (laughs) Um, Walter is just just distraught. Yeah. Distraught when he finds out what happened, especially since he knows it was his fault for mentioning the four foot long worm when they were in Dr. Che's store. Yep. Mm hmm. I can't but, even yeah. describe. Anyway, this of- is why we don't trust uh, nice white ladies in rich suburbs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just don't do it. I mean, I like I like that Peter was the first one to be like, it was really clean in there. Didn't you think it was really clean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like really clean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hermetically mm-hmm. sealed windows clean. That is yeah. wild. Yeah. That's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it turns out the the her son should have been Bubble Boy, but uh, this weird. Oh, I guess he's going back to being Bubble Boy now, though, because uh, we did it, everyone. We we stopped the human trafficking ring for white people to not be sick anymore. I mean, I don't know <laughs> that we stopped anything. This feels well. like this feels like a real Hail Hydra situation. Like, surely that one doctor was not the only person. Who no, kept they, this they organization like straight up say going. that. Like, oh no, actually, it was him. It was just the one guy. We traced That's it back impossible. to him. That's impossible. That makes no sense. We this did it, everyone. Super, we solved human trafficking. This we super cut off the head rich, of the snake. This super rich white lady. The snake and head, you might say. The the six... title of the the title of the episode. It's right no, there. We did it. We did it. We cut off the snake head. That's <laughs> why we named are it this. Six other <laughs> desperate wealthy people who are reliant on this treatment. Desperate wealthy people don't just stop. And so it's not yeah. even it's not even the triad. I know these desperate wealthy people will find another way. <laughs> I feel like it's that almost human problem where it's like, yay, we stopped the pointless burning of robotic hearts. <laughs> and why yes. is there still an organ donor list? Like, Right? <laughs> there are huge systematic issues and we yeah. haven't solved any of them. The tri- we haven't solved any of them, but I guess you put someone in jail. Good job. Or shot well, you someone need to in the find chest. out is, was this the kind of bad guy? Who actually, like, lets his underlings know what they're doing and why they're doing it. Because he doesn't have anyone helping him cut people open. Like, Not there anyway. Yeah. So, like, does the secret die with him? Does everyone no. else just go, what are these weird giant parasite things? I don't know. Like, I feel like we can do it one or two ways. Either he was the only one who knew the trick. 
And like, it's like now the secret's been lost or like his underlings are just going to take over and then it's going to in like five years, we'll be right back where we started. I, it's definitely right back where we started. It's like it's cocaine all over again. That. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> because they were using the name John Shu for everything. But that very easily, that was like eight to ten people using the same name. The Dread Pirate John Shu. <laughs> <laughs> Now there's your episode title. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to cover, but I feel like... Well, now we, we have the Chekhov's it. gun of uh, the tracking device in Walter's neck. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. So oh. can't wait <laughs> for that payoff. Can't wait for that payoff. I'm definitely going to get lost again, so I embedded a tracking device on my neck. Can we discuss how when Walter wakes up Peter, Peter was asleep on the couch, beer in hand. He had had a tough day. (laughs) You know, it was a tough day for, for for our boy. So he was entitled to that. It's been a tough three days. Beer in hand. That's still my favorite. Like, just the, and he wakes up and he still got it. You know, like yeah. in that way that it's just like, I'm not going to let this bill. It's my beer. <laughs> yeah. No, he's a, that is a professional beer holder. Napper. Like that's, that's a skill. And then he just <laughs> it's a skill. smiles and shakes his head. Oh, Walter, you have a tracking <laughs> yes. device in your neck. <laughs> yeah. I just love how, of course you did that. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's the of course you did that face. <laughs> Gosh, I'm trying to think of like if I have a one more thing or if anything we didn't cover. I feel I really enjoy Astrid and Walter in Chinatown together. Yes. Like me after too. the after the like I'm trying to be my own person and I'm trying to be independent and it's very frustrating when you guys don't trust me enough to let me like to let me try this, to let me mm-hmm. try and maybe I'll make mistakes, but whatever, like let me do this and then he just kind of gets but I mean you since you're here <laughs> I guess we can walk around yes <laughs> and then that immediate turnaround I love Chinatown <laughs> I know I love Chinatown well you know we haven't really talked about Olivia maybe Olivia can just be my my one more thing which is you know these weren't really Oliv- Olivia centric episodes but I love that you know, she just continued to be a rock star detective slash cop slash agent. And she just yeah. she just carried the team all through these three episodes, asking all the right questions, doing all the right things, and working alongside Broil. I like that we get a lot of Broil too. Yes. Broils, rather. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, Broils is uh uh like just any episode with Broils in it just makes me happy. <laughs> Agreed. Just wait. Was this in. one of the? Was this the one where he shows up while Astrid is like battling a snake, and yes. he's just like, and she's just like, over there, sir. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, doesn't say anything. Where's P- Where's Olivia? Over there with Peter. Cool. Walks away. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he actually, up. he actually saw the hookworm like fully slurping Attached whatever Walter. out of Walter's arm and just said nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Jean? Because Broyles know it's just a weird high thing. Like, <laughs> it's just a weird high. Speaking of Must Be Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Supplements. <laughs> Supplements. Did you have a one more thing, Nella? I know, Peter, uh, you, you've been in dangerous situations like in Baghdad and stuff, but why are you going into the dangerous bad place by yourself? Yes. It's like, like, I'm, you know what? I know you've been our damsel in distress the last couple of episodes. This is why, Peter, you put, mm-hmm. I think he just has a, a live will rescue me fetish at this point. <laughs> like, there's no other explanation for it. Uh, I think he just <laughs> likes being rescued. I mean, what, what could he possibly have done walking into that lab all I know, right? by himself? Stop. He knows I'm, I there's have an the, entire triad in there. What I know. are you going to do? I, know. I have the power of snark. <laughs> That's not how it works, Peter. That's not. That's not how it. No. Like it's one thing when he turns the corner chasing the child because he thought like, oh, the child is running away. Yeah. You know, he didn't know that it was a murderous mind controlling clone. Yeah. This this was very different in episode yeah. nine. 
I mean, we've seen this before, though, where he just, like, you know, runs into the danger. He chooses the danger. <laughs> and again, I it's don't know why. In his lizard brain, he's like, ah, bag- Baghdad was worse. And it's just like, Peter, you <laughs> survive on luck mm-hmm. and your good looks. And your and charm. And the fact that you speak Mandarin. Like, but eventually. Cantonese, Cantonese sorry. Uh, eventually you will run out <laughs> of of all that. <laughs> It's just it, look. His roles have just been really high, except for when Doctor Che like strapped him down and almost put a worm in his <laughs> yeah. face. Like, <laughs> but he still maybe managed he spent, to spit it out. Maybe, maybe he spent a fate point to have the FBI show up at the exact right moment before he swallowed. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Peter. Oh, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. He well. he just keeps he keeps pulling the short stick, <laughs> and I don't know why. With that, everyone, we would love to hear from you. Please check us out at Binge O'Clock Pod on Twitter and Facebook, where you can answer the question, which is not a question, name a food that is lost to time and that you wish you could recreate. You can also email us at bingeoclockpod at gmail.com. And don't forget, we have a Patreon. Find us at patreon.com slash <laughs> We've talked about this before, and it's always funny. <laughs> Sparkling jello. It's sparkling <laughs> jello. jello. Sparkling white grape jello. <laughs> I wish I could have some sparkling white grape jello right now. We okay. need this. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And be sure to tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones, tell the giant four foot long hookworms in your life about Pinch O'Clock, and we will see you next time. Name a food that is lost to time and that you wish you could recreate. White grape jello. Mmm. <laughs> and then you make it with seltzer so that it's fizzy. Mmm. And then I'm pretty sure they what? sold it as champagne jello. Fizzy jello. Yeah. What? I I have this visceral memory of champagne jello, and I'm pretty sure it was just white grape jello. Jello. Yes. No, I just Googled it. Sparkling white grape was is a discontinued flavor of jello. And you stir in boiling water, right? And then you stir in like a cup and a quarter of cold seltzer or club soda or they even say diet ginger ale because it's a swear jar. 80s. (laughs) (laughs) And everything's diet. (laughs) My brain is still not able to compute how jello can sparkle because no no it sparkles because like how does as, it fizz if it doesn't move because it traps the bubbles <laughs> but then they're just <laughs> holes then it's just jello with holes in it i'm telling you it would like <laughs> burst on your tongue and it would be fizzy what? yes look we can do this we can make I'm like, i've done this all right so so in an attempt to recreate this which was not good enough but it did the, it did a job but not the job i wanted i made champagne jello shots wherein i made jello shots using champagne and it had mm. the same effect so okay. now, now, Danielle, I will make you champagne yes. jello shots, but I'm going to tell you, they're not as good as the sparkling white okay. grape jello of my memories. <laughs> I, I accept they're not as good. I just need to understand text- texturally what that is. <laughs> <laughs>